All right, guys and gals, we're about to jump into C++ variables. Uh, variables are a crucial part of any programming language. There's a high-level overview of them. They are essentially a way of storing data, store references to things. And so that's what variables are. They work pretty similarly in most programming languages. So if you're accustomed to any other programming language, this isn't your first. It should uh, feel very familiar with some minor changes here or there, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Hey guys, I want to take a moment to recommend Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp to you. Dev Mountain's been a long term sponsor of mine. I appreciate their support as I've help grow the channel and tell everyone about their great facilities. I've actually been to their Provo, Utah campus and it's beautiful. So if you're interested in a full stack JavaScript bootcamp, they provide housing alongside the tuition so you can get up and go today. They're one of the most affordable boot camps in the world, in the States. And I highly suggest you check them out at devmountain.com. All right, so variables. So one thing that may be different um, is uh, variable types, right? There are various data types amongst languages, although some of them are very similar. So the int is integer numbers, whole numbers, as you can see here. The double is floating point numbers, such as 3.14. Chars are single characters denoted by the, um, you'll notice the single quotes. And then strings are Technically, they could be single characters, but um, are more than a single character and denoted by the double quotes. And then Booleans are true or false values. If you're not familiar with what like a Boolean would be, think of it as a quarter in which there's it's always going to land heads or tails. And don't be one of those comment guys, well, what if and it lands and it's perfectly straight up? That's not how this works. Um, but Boolean is for when you are going to have a yes or no um, data type. All right, so how do we declare variables in C++? Well, you'll first notice that in this example score, we are declaring what type it's going to be. Uh, most languages are statically typed languages, which means that you want to declare the type it's going to be, and you don't want to override it with another type, right? So if we had a score that was a a integer, we weren't going to override it with a score down the road when we reassign it with a string. But um, let's continue on. So here we'll create a int, a variable called year. All right. And we'll just put a semicolon in the statement. Um, all right, so they want us to compile it, right? Because remember, we have to compile our code. And we're going to compile variable.cpp. That's going to give us uh, a dot out. Now we're going to execute that. Now we don't have anything printing out, which is why we don't see anything. But it did compile and did, did execute. Now we need to initialize the variable. Um, so you notice we have this equal here. This is meaning that we're going to give it an initial value. In this case, it's going to be zero. Uh, let's give the variable uh, to what year it is, to 2019. So here we're declaring it, and now we're initializing. Notice how we don't have to say what data type it is, because we've already actually initialized it to that data type. All right, and we're going to do it one more time where we're going to compile a variable that CPP and then we're now going to ex execute uh, a dot out and run our code like so. Cool. Now, um, in the last example, we showcased how to do this in two steps. You don't have to do it in two steps, and honestly, you probably don't need to or want to do it in two steps most of the time, but that is an option. So we can combine these two steps by just assigning it at the same level that we are, are declaring it, meaning that we are creating a variable and we're initializing the value all in the same line, exactly like the, the combination here. 
So instead of doing it on two lines, let's go ahead and declare our int year and assign it to 2019. Let's make that a little bit bigger for everybody. Run our code. Excellent. Uh, now what we want to do is same thing. We want to compile our code and run it again. Now, um, once you move forward in your C++ development, you won't be typing all this out, although you could. There'll typically probably be a IDE that you just click a button and it does it for you. So arithmetic operators. Um, you know, if you're, hopefully everyone who's taken this course is somewhat familiar with math. Uh, and you're familiar with uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and that's not going to be any surprise to you. So um, there's also this modulus, which gives the remainder. So a good example of this is if I had 5 modulus 4, my remainder would be 1. If I had, if I had 10 modulus 4, my remainder would be 2. That would be what would happen there. So that's how the modulus operator works. Um, in math, we've already uh, declared initialized variable score. Let's change its value um, of one, two, three, four, and multiply it. Oh, actually, I want to do it here. Right, so when I say score, we're going to reassign the value to one, two, three, four, and we want to multiply it by ninety-nine. All right. Uh, but how do we know what value it is? Well, uh, we can see out it, right? And so it looks like that, we haven't done this before, but it looks like we can have multiple, this, this is one way that we can cat, concatenate multiple things, where we'll have our score and then we'll append a, another slash n. So we'll go ahead and use the std colon colon see out. And we're gonna take our score. And then we're also going to add a new line to it and cool go ahead and run that and now what do we want to do well we want to actually compile it and now we're going to do it dot a dot out and we get this number i'm going to take their word for it that looks about right um, as to what it is so chaining um that's sort of what just happened, or no, sort of is what just happened. So I'm saying we chain together our various C out statements. Uh, if we want our code to go C out, C out, C out, we'll output, hi, I'm 28 years old, right? And we have our, age, this age is just a variable, we're storing this in. And, um, you know, we could do the same in one C out statement, but with multiple um, uh, operators to chain it together. So. Let's go ahead and chain our player score together. How would we do this? Well, we have our std colon c out, alligator brackets. In here, we're gonna put player score, put a space, and what do we want? We want score. Oh, and make a new line after. There we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, I did a forward slash, didn't I? I was like, you definitely want to make sure you do the right slashes. Um, where did, oh, some minor syntax mistakes. It happens. All right, so we. We have our STC, C, STDC out, player score, with the score value coming from our variable. And now let's go ahead and compile it. At this point, you're probably sick of typing, as I am, the various <laughs> like, file names, but it's the name of the game. And then we're in dot a dot out. Player score is currently zero. That is correct. So, so far we've only been outputting data, but one of the great things about software is it has the ability to, in, to take in data and do things. So, much like C out would output, C in is going to input. Let's go ahead and take a, an example. So, 
you'll see here um, it works similarly. Instead, it takes instead of the left alligator brackets, it takes the right alligator brackets, uh, and um, it'll allow them to save the value in the variable that we're passing in here. So you notice we have this tip, and we're asking enter a tip amount, and then what do we want to do? We want to find out what that tip's going to be. So we can do std colon colon cn tip. And this will then ask them what they want to put the tip is and store that value in here. And then when we're done, after we get done asking them, we can go ahead and add some confirmation, right? Um, you can think of it as a receipt in this case. And we'll go ahead and do something like this. You paid space. Uh, tip place dollars period and our code oops all right so you want to run and compile it so it's going to be g plus plus tip dot cpp to run that it's going to be a dot out and so now you'll see it's first ask this it now is saying enter a tip amount oh, what, do you, what do you guys think how much is i don't really normally tip percent but we'll just say it's five bucks you paid five dollars as the follow-up excellent so that's how we're going to be able to input and output data challenge i'll step up um temperature part one so uh how might we First, Google the current temperature in New York and Fahrenheit. Let's see. It is 44 degrees Fahrenheit, you poor guys. Uh, <laughs> so New York is 44 degrees. Store that in a variable called double. Store that in value in a double variable. And remember, double is floating point. And we'll call that temp F. We're gonna set that to 44.0. We'll just actually do four. We'll just throw it in there. Also declare another double variable called temp C. And we'll set that equal to, oh, actually I don't think they want us to um, declare temp C, right? So it's, uh, or assign a value. Now calculate the result in Celsius. All right, so we're gonna use a little bit of math. So here is the formula for that. And so what we're gonna do is just simply set temp C is equal to um, F. And now math goes, it follows its normal order of operations, right? So if we didn't have these parentheses around F minus 32 degrees, it's gonna take 32 and divide it by 1.8 before it subtracts. So we need to use the parentheses in here because it's gonna work exactly like you imagine. So temp F is our Fahrenheit. We're going then minus 32, and then we're gonna divide by 1.8. All right. Display the result. Oh, easy enough. So we're going to do std colon colon C out. And this is going to be the temp is, and then we'll do temp C, space degrees, um, backward slash M, to add a new line, and space Celsius. So if we did that correctly, Maybe I won't set on a different line. Period. Celsius period. That might have been it. Let me see what it's given us. 
SGDC out. Call uh, alligator the temp is space. Degrees. Oh, I think this is wrapping. I don't think they actually wanted the line break there. They wanted the line break. Oh, and also I did. I did my own issue here. Celsius dot and then backwards slash n. All right. Uh, I did single brackets out of out of temp. Uh, temp is temp c. Degrees Celsius. Oh, there we go. Syntax mistakes, the bane of my existence. So now let's go ahead and com compile it. G. This is going to be temperature.cpp. And then we want to run a dot out. So now you get that it's about 7 degrees Celsius in, in um, New York right now, which is unfortunate. So before we actually hard coded this temperature F value to New York's value, now we want to allow ask the user. So that's going to be std uh, out because first we want to tell them what it is that we want them to do, and then we'll say uh, enter the temperature in Fahrenheit colon space. And then we want to do std um, colon colon cn reverse alligator brackets and then uh, excuse me no quotes there and then that's going to be temp f and we're going to store that value in temp f compile and execute uh, g plus plus temp sure uh, CPP. Uh, temperature. Let's see. Where did we? Uh, where did we go wrong here? Out is not. Oh. There we go, which is why we compile error code, uh, so we can see our errors, right? Let me run that again. Maybe just to update it. it might be cached. There we go. So now we're good to go. A dot out dot slash A dot out. Let me clear this so you guys can see this. Uh, dot slash a dot out. Enter the temperature. We'll just say it's 100, which is about 37 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So in review, we learned a couple things. One, we learned that there are different data types that we know exist. And there's more than this, I would imagine, down the road. But this is a good uh, spot to get you going. We learned about ints being whole numbers, doubles being floating point numbers, characters being individual characters, strings being a sequence of characters, and booleans being true or false. We also learned how to declare a variable, assign a variable, and um, we learned how to get data in and out. So we have a, oh, looks, looks we got a, a bonus optional. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, BMI is completely used by health and nutrition professionals to estimate body fat in the populations is by this formula here. Okay, find the BMI, um, finish the BMI CPP program. So uh, type in your height. Cool. So then we can get height here. And so that's our CN. Now what we want to do here is to see out. And we want to say, well, type in your weight. And we'll do std colon colon cn. And this is going to be uh, weight. And then we'll say uh, 
our BMI is going to be equal to my weight uh, or weight divided by height times height like so and then we're going to do std colon colon c out we'll just do bmi now your bmi is space BMI. All right, let's go ahead and compile it. Make sure everything's good. G plus plus BMI.cpp. Excellent. Now we want to go ahead and run it. A dot out. Type in your weight. All right, height in meters. Got it. Um, we'll just say two. I'm six foot. I don't, I don't remember what a meter is. Uh, Type in your weight. Huh, it didn't continue on here. Type in your height, type in your weight. Show that one more time. Let's run our code. Maybe we forgot to run it and that was the issue. So now that we've made changes, Compile it one more time. Type, there we go. Uh, we forgot to hit run. Type in your weight. Uh, I don't know. We'll say 150. Uh, well, probably close to 190 now. Uh, your BMI is 47.5. Very nice. We probably would want to put a new line there. All right. So that completes the variable section, I believe. Yeah. Uh, up next. In the next video, we're going to be talking about conditionals and logic to get you going here with C++. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That's a thing. Uh, and, of course, uh, look forward to my weekly live streams where I answer your guys' questions. And um, if you're interested in any of my courses, there's links in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course. Get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.